Hi everyone. Welcome to my second video on indexing. In this video I'm going to talk about a tool that I think most of us are going to be at least passably familiar with, and that is the Spindexer. I say passably familiar with because these things are all over the place. Uh, you see articles written about them in the Home Shop Machinist and Machinist Workshop magazines. You see forum posts about them and how to modify them for your needs. And they're relatively cheap. You used to be able to find these every month in the sale catalogs for around $50 or $60. Now they're upwards of around $80 US. So that means that a lot of people out there have bought these for their indexing needs on the mill. These were originally meant to be used on a surface grinder and not a milling machine. Let's talk about all the bits and pieces. First of all, they take 5C collets, just like the collet indexer that I showed you in my last video. So you can put a regular 5C collet in there. There's a draw tube back here that the collet threads into, just like if you were using it on a lathe. And since it takes 5C collets, you can use the wide variety of 5C collets that are out there. You can use uh, round, hex, square, rectangular. You can use emergency collets, which are machinable. Of course, you can also use collets set up with collet stops because you've got plenty of clearance back there. Now, just like the collet indexer that I showed in the previous video, this one uses direct indexing, meaning you have this circle of holes in the plate and you have a pin that drops into each one of those holes, and that's how you get your divisions. You just pull the pin, move the spindle over to the next hole, and then drop the pin back in. That means as far as the divisions that are available to you, you have any factor of 36, which would be 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Notice that covers 2, 3, 4, and 6, which are by far the most common divisions that you're going to be doing in the shop. On the back side of the plate, you actually have degree markings back here. So it, they're labeled 0 through 35, so 36 divisions. That helps you keep track of where you are on the circle. And you would pull this pin and rotate it to the next available hole in order to get your divisions. Now you'll notice we've got all these other holes here. These actually allow you to index down to degrees. So if you pull the pin out of the zero hole right there, and let's say we wanted to get 15 degrees, we could move it over to the five hole and it drops it in at the five degree mark. So now we're 15 degrees over what would have been our first cut at the zero mark. This actually allows you to do one degree indexing, which means that you can actually index to any factor of 360. Now I'm not going to go ahead and list all of the factors of 360 because there's quite a lot of them, and that would probably make this video just a little long and more than a little boring. So let's move this back to zero. Imagine for a second that we make our first cut here at zero, by the way. There is a witness mark right up here that you can see right on camera. It's a little V pointing at the line on the plate. So let's say we've got our piece set up and we make our first cut at zero, and we really want to move 33 degrees away from that. We just move our pin over to the three hole, and then we put our witness mark in between the 30 and 35 degree mark. And when it drops in, we're 33 degrees away from our original cut. Let's talk about a few other anatomical features about this. Uh, first of all, you've got a spindle lock right here that you can tighten up by hand, keeps the spindle from moving. It's also got a hole in there so you can lubricate it. There's a little shaft collar here that you can undo so that you can get some motion outwards in the spindle for certain jobs. Now I mentioned that these were meant to be used on a surface grinder and a lot of people do use these on the mill, but you end up with a lot of clearance issues between the spindle and the plate right up here. As you can see, the collet is quite close to this plate when it's drawn all the way in. You're going to have to make sure that you have some kind of long tool holder to avoid running the spindle or the tool holder or the tool into the indexing device. I wouldn't recommend taking very heavy cuts on this if you're going to use it on a milling machine because this pin is just held in there by friction. There's a slight taper to the end of it where it meets the holes, <clears throat> but there's really not a lot holding it in. So if you do plan on using this for milling, please make sure to take light cuts so the pin doesn't just vibrate out 
and lock the spindle lock down before you make your cut. This is one of the imported versions of this tool. It's a Phase 2 brand. I have used the Suburban version of this tool. We have one over at the college and the differences between the two are very numerous. For one thing, the Suburban is actually machined and ground on all the sides so that you can set it up easier on a surface grinder. This one's only ground down at the bottom. That makes it very difficult to actually set up to do anything on a surface grinder without dialing it in. If you've got the sides machined and ground, then you can set it up against the fence on the magnetic chuck or space it away from that fence using parallels or set it up using angle blocks if you need to grind an angle. I mentioned earlier in the video that there are a lot of articles and forum posts focusing on this tool. and Most of the subject of those articles is in making this tool as usable and as user-friendly as the name brand tools that it copies. Now I don't have a surface grinder so I bought this for use with my mill and usually what I do is just clamp it in the vise right there but you could also put it down onto the table and clamp it down using step clamps especially if you wanted to hold it at an angle. I've seen people who have machined key slots into the bottom at 90 degrees to each other so they could set it up on the table very easily without having to dial it in. One nice thing about it is if you hold it in a vise, you can actually set it up at an angle using angle blocks or a sign plate as well. I bought this as my first indexer because I couldn't afford a dividing head at the time. And I think that's probably the story with a lot of people who buy this. They see it in the catalogs, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's quite versatile and easy to use. It's also not very heavy or bulky, so it's easy to store and easy to move around. And this whole thing can be lifted with one hand quite easily. It's maybe about the same weight as a bowling ball, between 14 and 16 pounds, maybe in the neighborhood of 6 or 7 kilos. So it's really not that hard to move around, which is another thing that makes it very attractive. I hope this video informs you a little bit about this tool and maybe teaches you some things about it you didn't know. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.